In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of setting up your own custom wheels using Autodesk Inventor. So if you look at your Dragster design specification sheet, you'll notice that the wheels uh, on your car, there must be exactly four of them, each of which separately must meet the regulations in the wheels sections below. So um, all wheels must touch the racing surface at the same time. All wheels must roll. Wheels must be made entirely from plastic, which if you want to 3D print these, you could print them from ABS plastic or PLA or whatever material is currently available uh, from your instructor. The dimensions must be consistent for the sur full circumference of the wheel. So the wheel diameter and the wheel width are the two main dimensions or specifications that we're going to be paying close attention to. So the minimum of the wheel diameter can be no smaller than 30 millimeters and the maximum can be no greater than 40 millimeters. The wheel width, okay, that is how thick the wheel is, cannot be any greater than uh, 18 millimeters and cannot be any uh, thinner than the 2 millimeters. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my Autodesk Inventor and show you an example wheel that I put together here. And we will walk through this particular wheel design and hopefully you'll get an idea of how you can create your own design using the skill set that hopefully you'll acquire from watching this video. So. If you take a look at this wheel, you'll see that um, there's a pattern that was created in here, and we use the pattern tool or a pattern feature. You'll also notice that there is um, the wheel is set up so that there's a curved edge, so there is not a flat um, flat side going all the way around. It's curved now for the actual tread of the wheel or the tread of the tire in this case, if that were actually a tire. Um, there are some open spaces in the wheel itself so that can kind of reduce weight a little bit and you also see a hole inside the wheel that will be set up for that will be set up specifically for the axle so to get started with this I'm going to go up and go to file new make sure that it's in the dragster folder which it is a standard millimeter IPT hit create this is part four to start a new 2D sketch and since these wheels will be placed on the side of the car and we set that up on the XY work plane so we're going to go to the XY work plane and click it flattens out so we now see the X and the Y and you would normally think that you're going to create a circle uh, right on the axis or right on the origin and then go from there and extrude it that's one way of doing this, but there is a, another way that I'm going to be walking you through the process of doing that. And the nice thing about that is it will use some of the other tools that are available. Uh, we will be, be using the Revolve tool, which is a 3D modeling part feature that will pop up whenever you go to 3D model. So the Revolve tool, which will basically allow us to revolve around a central axis any 2D profile that we create. So it will revolve, it will go in a circular pattern around the particular axis that we are going to use. So I'm going to start a new sketch, which I already did, or which I should have already set up. So let me right click and hit edit sketch. I'm on the sketch and I'm going to first use the line tool. I'm going to just drag, click on the X axis and then drag down along the X axis. I'm sorry, the Y axis and hit the escape. Click on the line and then click on the mirror tool or I'm sorry the center line tool and that turns into a center line and you'll see why this comes in handy in a little bit then I'm going to draw just the rough 2d profile of what the wheel should look like um, that will be revolved so you may not be able to visualize this at first but once I use the revolve feature um, it will all make sense so I'm going to click once to start my first endpoint drag down, vertic uh, dra down vertically click then come on over, go up, over, up, and then connect. Now from here, if I go back to my other drawing that I was in and go to the Revolve feature, expand it, right click on Sketch, hit Edit Sketch, this is what I've just started. Okay. And I'd have to actually spin this to where I had it from before. So this is what I just started. I created this L shape that you see here. So 
The reason why I drew the center line was so that the center line going down um, the y-axis will indicate a start point or an end point in this case. So if you start here and dimension from here to here, it's not going to dimension from there to there. Um, Autodesk Inventor will dimension all the way across to the opposite side where the revolution will be completed at. So that should be 40 millimeters at the maximum if I looked at my specifications. And then the axle hole for the actual axle that will ride through that or will be connected to that, I have it set at 3. Um, now this is one thing that you want to check with your instructor on because every instructor may use different materials different axles, steel axles, aluminum axles, They're, the tolerances on these may be different. So it's a very important that you check with your instructor to make sure that you these measurements are up to date before you start printing your wheels um, or any other production processes you're going to use to create the wheels. So um, let's go into the other drawing again and draw out what you see here. So I'm going to go to dimension, click on this line here, and click on the center line. We're going to set that to 3. Okay. And don't worry about it if it moves things around. Then the next dimension I want to go with is from here to here. And that's the one that I can set it to be 40. And now if you wanted to make it the wheels not the full measurement of or the full specification, which was 40, you could change it to whatever you want it to be. So let's say you wanted 30 which was the minimum. It's entirely up to you. You can always go back and change this by going into the revolution like I showed you in the last couple seconds and then hit edit sketch, uh, the sketch that was created, the 2D profile. So I'm going to leave this at 4 for the tutorial. The height of this, or the height of the wheel, that's the thickness of the wheel and if we go back and look, the wheel width is supposed to be anywhere from 2 to 18 millimeters. I'm going to go with a thinner wheel um, because maybe this is a wheel that would go in a shell car. I'm going to set that to 2 and click on the check mark. And then I'm also going to set this here to here. I'm going to set that to 4. It's good that you make this a little bit thicker in that way that the if once you push the axles through, um, if you're 3D printing, sometimes the plastic starts to wobble a little bit um, if the, the wheels are actually the thickness of the wheels are too narrow. Um, so it's very important to give it that extra thickness right along the axle so that you have nice straight wheels and they don't um, create unwanted or unnecessary drag, unwanted friction that is occurring on the wheels and the surface that is tr the car is traveling on. And then uh, let's see if we have all of our measurements here. So 2, 4, the 40, 3, looks good, finish the sketch, and it rotates. And now you can kind of sense what's going to happen here. This 2D profile, instead of extruding in one direction, so if I were to go in and hit extrude, it's going one direction. We don't want that. Instead, we want to revolve, so go around. So I need to select that. Actually, it previews it for you without you even um, entering it in for it, uh, in the actual software. So normally you would select the profile, select the profile, and then click on the axis, which is this thing right here, and then hit OK. So there is the full revolution, and the first part of this tutorial is now complete. You have the wheel. So if you're satisfied with this, chances are your instructor may already have a wheel that is similar to this, so you may not have to actually 3D print this, and instead you can uh, save time on the printer for someone, uh, another student who actually is creating their own custom wheels more than what you see right here. So if you want to customize them further, you can continue watching this video, but if you're satisfied with what you see here, and this is all you need for the assembly, then you are done watching at this point. Now, from here, I'm going to flatten this side out. So I'm going to grab the look at tool. Or I'm sorry, yeah, the look at tool. Click on this, flatten it out. And from here, I'm going to start a new sketch. But this time, the sketch is going to be on this surface, not the top of this, but on this surface right here. Click. And I'm going to project this geometry from the outside circle and this inside circle. And what that means is that I'm actually going to be able to use a tool in the modify option here for offsetting. Offsetting allows us to duplicate a selected geometry um, from a previous sketch or a sketch that you're currently working on and make that geometry a distance away from the, uh, the other piece. So if you see, 
Well, you'll see what I'm talking about. Go to Project Geometry, click on this outside circle, click on this inside circle, and they highlight yellow. And then go to Offset, and then you can see it's equal. this circle is equal distance on all sides from the outside circle. I'm going to set that to 2. I'm going to go with this other one, and I'm going to set that one to 2. And from here, I'm going to use the Line tool, and I'm going to show you a couple other tools. So I'm going to draw down from this first point on that new circle that I created to the second circle that I created. And then I'm going to grab the offset tool again. And this time, I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to do an offset from here going over two. And then I'm going to do one from the other side going over two. Now, from here, you can see that there's some overlap here. And there, there's nothing, there's no lines that connect from here to here. So we need to do an extension and we need to do a trim. So these are new, two new tools that I'm going to show you how to use, the Trim tool and the Extend tool. If you know how to use these, that's fine, but if you've never used them before, they come in handy anytime you have any intersecting geometry that needs to be modified. So I'm going to Trim here, Trim here, and then I'm going to Extend here and here. Now I'm going to go ahead and Trim the outside and this one, the inside. I can trim that inside one too as well. And all I have left is just the 2D profile of what I want to actually later cut out. But I want to put these, these little pockets, these little openings, going all the way around this central axis that is coming at us, and that is the Y axis. It's actually coming straight through the screen. So from here, I don't finish the sketch, but I actually use another tool. It's called the Pattern or Circular Pattern tool. Click on Circular Pattern. I need to select the geometry first, so I'm going to select all of the geometry of this polygon here, and then I'm going to click on the axis that I want this to revolve around in a circular fashion. It's going to go 360 degrees all the way around. I have it going copied, it's duplicated six times, so there are one, two, three, four, five, six of them here. If you would rather have more than that, maybe eight, or maybe you want to go with only four, it is entirely up to you and your design. I'm going to go with, let's say, you can even do five if you wanted to. A five spoke kind of looks like that, even though this is just the five openings. Hit OK. And then go ahead and finish the sketch. From here, rotate it to the isometric view. Extrude. And we're going to extrude all these openings. So I have to select each one of them individually first. And then click on Cut. Now it's important that you change the distance, the extents, instead of 10 millimeters, change that to all. And the reason why is because if you go back into the model menu over here, your history, that's your, your model history, if you want to go back into that browser menu and you want to change anything later on, maybe you want to make that wheel thicker, if you make the wheel thicker, you can go all the way up to 40 millimeters without having to worry about the extents um, being a problem. So we had that set to 10 millimeters before. So those holes would not go through a 40 millimeter thickness. Instead, they would stop 10 millimeters through. Even though in this case, 10 millimeters would have gone all the way through the 2 millimeter thickness of the wheel. So go ahead and hit OK now since we have our extent set to all. So it doesn't matter what thickness of the wheel will be. It will always, you will always see those five holes cut through. Hit OK. And there is the finished wheel up to this point. Now, if you want, if, uh, if there's anything else that you want to do to the wheel, you're more than welcome to do that at this time as far as customization is concerned. You can go to the filleting option, and the filleting option allows you to um, round out the edges here. And sometimes, you know, if you click on both of these circles and it gives you a problem, like you see right here, you need to change that. And that's because the radius is obviously, um, it's going to self-intersect. Two millimeters would all obviously cut the whole piece away uh, because the thickness of the wheel is only two. So if you set it to 1 and you look closely, 1 would be fine. It's still going to intersect, but that's okay. You could also go with a 0.5. That's just a slight curve on either side of or either edge. Or maybe a 0.75. And that would help if I had, didn't have two decimals. There you go, and hit Apply. And there's the rounded edge that you see right there. You can go ahead and do that to the insides too, if you wish to do so or even add a fillet 
Um, so it's sloping inward here. So if you click on this, you can have that fill it there as well. And what's nice about that is it gives it a stepping. Um, it's going to make it actually more, it's going to make it stronger if you 3D print it. When you 3D print this, the wheel would actually go, the bottom of the wheel, this would be the bottom that goes onto the build plate. And then it would print layer by layer going up all the way to this hub part that you see right here. Okay, so if you put this curved edge here, add that radius to the edge, it actually helps strengthen it because it's thickening that connection between here and here. So if you like what you see, hit apply, close it out. There's your wheel. Change the colors or anything else in the default and the materials, those can all be changed as well. But that's all I'm showing you here um, with the wheel. So go ahead and file, save as, make sure you're saving to your project folder. And this is now the custom wheel. And that is it.